Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. How are you? Good. Uh, welcome all those who are watching Unfiltered, A Random Moment with Pastor David. And Pastor, today, uh, I wanted to just get some feedback to you. It seems that Christians more recently seem to be very angered. Uh, we see it a lot on Facebook. We see it a lot when it comes to politics. We see it a lot when there's an agenda that wants to be pushed, whether from the pulpit or from within the congregation. And it seems that there is just this angriness, if that's a word, among brothers and sisters in the Lord that are even devouring one another in certain things. And, and we see this division in the church. What do you say about that, Pastor? I, I think that there has been division in the church from very early in its history, so it's not new. In the book of Acts, we see the first division when the um, Hellenized uh, Jewish women, the Greek-speaking Jews, were being neglected in the, uh, the care that would be given to the widows, and that the Hebrew culture and speaking uh, believers, uh, Jews who had converted, were being given um, priority. And so you see the first division that began very early in the history of the church. And so as long as there are human beings who are calling ourselves Christians, there's going to be opportunity for the flesh to, to quench the spirit. And so what we see today isn't anything new. I mean, it, it was so, um, so common that even Paul himself had a right to tell two women in the church, Eodius and Syntyche, to get along because these were women apparently who were leaders in the church whose difficulties they were having between the two of them was of such nature that it was causing believers to stumble. You see in the Corinthian church that there were those who were coming not respecting the poor who were there for the uh, agape feast there in the communion service that they would have in the church and, and some were eating and drinking even to excess where the... Uh, those in need who actually would really need a, a meal as they were provided at that time were being neglected. So you can go into the scriptures and find uh, in the New Testament uh, more than one account of, of difficulty and division. It could be division over social issues. It can be division over scriptural issues. You know, there are people in the Corinthian church who are the saying there is no such thing as a resurrection of the dead or that the resurrection has already taken place. You have Judaizers who are entering into Galatia and telling people you need to, to bring yourself under the law and be circumcised in order to be truly understanding what the grace of God is and to be a genuine believer. So you can see over and over again, John, that there was division and sometimes even anger amongst the brethren. I mean, even Paul and Barnabas had such a difference that was so strong that it was such a sharp uh, division that they separated and went in different directions to do their ministries. And so is it possible for spirit-filled believers, or possible for Christians to have difficulties and differences with other believers? And quite obviously, the answer is, is obviously yes, of, of course. And so do I see that today? Yes, because human beings still occupy pulpits and, and uh, occupy pews. I believe that God has given us remedies for that. I, I believe that we should, as much as lies within us, live at peace with all men. Like Paul told the Romans, we should strive uh, not against one another, but together for the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And we should have honest dialogues amongst ourselves and the essential things we should embrace together. Those things that are non-essential in terms of our salvation or the practice of the church we should probably treat with uh, charity those who have a, a different opinion and and all I, I think that one of the things you mentioned uh, that is kind of apparent though is is when we begin to bring into our pulpit things that really don't necessarily um, uh, edify believers in their faith in Jesus Christ we have to be careful as as a as pastor, I have to be careful to rightly divide the word of truth and to present it to the people for what it is, God's word, 
exhorting and encouraging people to embrace and act in faith those things that we're learning together and to and to just love one another. I mean, isn't that what Jesus said? He said, by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one for another, right? And so, yeah, there's always been differences in the church. And I do think that subject, certain subjects will divide. The church, I, I, I believe that some churches uh, are preaching, not just one or two, but churches, uh, n numbers of churches are, are, are preaching uh, Republican politics to such a degree that no, um, no unbelieving Democrat would ever want to come to that church. You know, you can look at the church and wonder, are there any unbelievers in this church? Are there any people who are, you know, not Republican in this church or independent? Are there any? Because yeah, almost one of the qualifications sometimes it seems is to be in this church, you need to agree with me politically. You need to be the same um, platform I have. And I see that sometimes, John, and we spoke of this recently, but um, I, I want people who don't know Jesus to, to find Jesus in my church. Uh, I have certain, certain um, political beliefs that I think are are the kind that permeate the way we live and they ought to. And so I, I would welcome those who may not agree with, with my politics. I would, I would invite them to hear the theology and to see what Jesus Christ can do in a life and to see whether or not the things that they believe are, are um, what, what, what would the word be that are um, permitted they think that Christ may permit or even agree with them. Uh, if you can spend some time in the Word and see what the Word says on those subjects, John, I have seen people who have had lifestyles and life beliefs that have been transformed simply by the washing of the Word of God. And um, so I didn't have to stand up and, and pound my fists on a pulpit and show the anger that I can righteously sometimes feel over issues and injustices so that maybe the church can become what the original band of Jesus's apostles where they love one another where you could have a, a tax collector and a zealot in the same band of men you could you could have uh, people that were so different in in the way they thought and the way they had been it would be like similar to having a uh, a member of the clan and a member of uh, uh, BLM uh, coming to find something is greater than the thing that has been driving them all along, right? I mean, that's what you had. I mean, when you have a zealot and you have a tax gatherer in the same group and taking long walks and eating together, what is it that brought these two people together? It was a kingdom that was not of man. It was a heavenly kingdom, something that offered what, what their own belief system could not. It, it was a kingdom that was, that was royal. It was a kingdom that was of love. The kingdom of God uh, is one of joy and peace. It's one of the spirit and um, those kinds of things were the things that brought men together. So I think that uh, there is a lot of disunity in the church because we're not looking at Jesus. It's like the apostle Peter walking on water, you know, and nobody else was. The other men were in the boat, but Jesus said, come, and he went, walked on water, and then saw that the conditions around him were really, well, it was impossible for him to be doing what he was doing, the winds and the waves and all, and then he began to sink and we all know the story of how he said, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out, took him, and walked him back to the boat, right? Well, maybe we need to stop looking at the wind and the waves around us and seeing how we're going to stop the wind and calm the wave. And maybe we ought to put our eyes on Christ and say, Jesus, how can we live in a world that is in such a storm that we walk with you and help others to find the concrete reality 
of what faith actually is. And so, yeah, that's why I try to stay away from things that divide unnecessarily. If the word of God divides, let it divide. But if my opinions divide, then let me just quiet my opinions. Well, we see that, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, we see that uh, the opinions are the things that matter today versus the word of God being taught. And as you mentioned, there's just been this undivided disunity, disunity that you see a lot of angry Christians devouring angry. one another. Sure, if you if you get caught up with subjects that are anger provoking, what what kind of fruit would we expect? Wouldn't we expect the the fruit to be one of anger? We're angry, <laughs> and we're preaching anger to the people. You know, I think this is wrong, and I think this is wrong, and we're living in a time when when we could spend all our time pointing out what is wrong, whether it's a parade, whether it's an abortion, whether it's homosexuals getting married, um, you name it. We can find things to differ on and be angry about. And uh, I, I think it's, um, it's, it's not a, a real wise thing to do is to keep pouring something into people that help them to remain angry rather than to find uh, how can I minister to someone I disagree with? You know, the wrath of man never produces the righteousness of God, James said, and it's true. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. My anger over something isn't going to make somebody turn away from that thing that they've embraced. Uh, truth and love and the power of the Spirit has a better, I have a better chance of helping them to see, you know, that, you know, Jesus is, Jesus is loving. Yes. Heaven is is, is our destination and um, peace and unity is a byproduct of, of having your sins forgiven and, and I've seen God do that with not just few but hundreds into the thousands over the years I mean I've been ministering in this church for 40 years you know um, I've been in ministry for 47 John I've seen God do a lot if, if I want to make people angry, I can do that. I just watch some news and come and give the news to the people. He'll make you nice and mad. <laughs> or I can, I can teach the word and I can approach those subjects in a way that people can see where I'm coming, coming from, but not feel like I'm pointing a finger at them at the same time. And to help, God willing, help them to see that all things are possible with God and my life needs to be changed so I can be in line with his design and things of that nature so that's why I stay with the word when we can understand that our lives reflect the goodness mercy and wisdom of God it may help us to understand that it's not about our opinions and it's about keeping our eyes on Jesus keep your eyes on Jesus well pastor thank you so much for the, you. your time and I want to invite you guys to come out Wednesday evening at excuse me Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We're going through Job chapter 37. 37. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're wrapping up the book of Job pretty soon. Pretty soon. Look forward to having you guys out. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you, Pastor David, again. Of course. Uh, we have Israel trip coming up this Sunday. We have our info meeting after second service in the sanctuary. Come join us if you have questions. Want to uh, talk to our rep from Inspired Travel? We'd love to have you. Our 40th anniversary is coming up July 25th. Uh, look forward to having you, church family, come join us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. God bless you guys.